position paper on Rowing State Mega Million Projects. Listen. The Rowing State Transition Legislative Assembly and Executive Branch of the Rowing State Governorship had unanimously passed and reached the resolution to borrow the loan of $30 million to fund for the mega physical infrastructure development projects as is outlined in the 20 pages document circulated so far. The nature of the proposed projects is not only overpriced slash expensive, but it is a suspicious contract due to its lucrative and fallacious deal with the alleged investor. First and foremost, the physical infrastructure projects outlined and detailed by the Rowing State Supreme Authorities are significant infrastructural programs for the sustainable development of the Rowing State. However, these proposed projects are not feasible to be prioritized now of the financial scarcity and economic woe in South Sudan due to lack of adequate revenues and other supplementary resources to generate the state incomes to finance these lucrative projects at this economic depression time in South Sudan, and particularly in Rowing State. After I have thoroughly and comprehensively audited, evaluated and analyzed the 20 pages documents, these massive projects reminded me of the billion dollar Dura project which was being exploited by the former minister of the South Sudan Ministry of Finance Economic Ministry, Kualatayan to Lunder and embezzle the billion dollars from the National Treasure of South Sudan revenue. In this case, it appears that the project of Rowing State is designed to squander the public funds of Rowing State through the proposed mega projects. Therefore, the nature and source of the proposed projects remain ludicrous, fraudulent, and suspicious to citizens. No popular consultation was made. I am for the proposed projects to be implemented in the future when the sources of constant incomes for Rowing State are generated and sustained with the financial flows and sustainability. Secondly, our state government ought to work gradually on the prioritization of the developmental projects based on their necessities and affordability. In this regard, Rowing State should not be made liable financially and economically to borrow such an expensive loan of $30 million at this fragile economy of South Sudan. Most of the proposed projects are not needed at this stage. Rather, our state government should prioritize the ultimate development by allocating much of the little fund we have currently to finance the most basic infrastructure such as the health, education, water systems, roads, environment, food slash agriculture and other training services. It is therefore essential for the state authorities to channel the Rowing State Developmental Funds to finance the infrastructural development and services in the fundamental infrastructure such as clean drinking water system, health, education, roads, environment, agriculture slash food security and basic social amenities. The need for the luxurious vehicles, fancy office buildings, airport, ports, and other expensive furniture for the operation are secondary wants which should never be prioritized at this critical time of the financial scarcity and economic woes in South Sudan. The nature of the deal is overpriced, and hence it raised the question of the credibility and validity of the project intention. Having studied the project documents carefully, most of the project price tags are extremely inexpensively inflated slash overpriced. And this raised the question of the fallacious intent of the proposed projects is fraudulent scam with the clandestine intent of rowing state revenue laundering. Moreover, the citizens of Rowing State should not be put in the detriment state to pay it later. Citizens must fear for wasteful spending, financial graft and scandals. In addition, the creditor or investing company slash investor background in South Sudan is obscured and therefore its credibility to contract this construction programs of the Rowing State infrastructure remains to be reviewed and verified for authenticity. The shareholders of the B.P. T company and their business venture credentials and reputations must be credited as a trustworthy entity to conduct the contractual transaction business with, but only if it is a credible and trustworthy contractor. The shareholders are opaque. Finally, the $30 million budget is dubbed as a loan when it should be the cash money revenue flowing from the 2%-3% share allocated for the oil producing areas of Rowing State. Rowing State citizens are not ready to inherit an expensive loan they will never benefit through the proposed development projects. The projects are overpriced expensively, and the projected loan or revenue to be spent is extremely high and exceedingly expensive beyond the incomes of Rowing State. In conclusion, the proposed programs of infrastructural projects are essential for the future sustainable development and operation of Rowing State government. However, the most essential infrastructures and amenities which require developmental funding are the water system, health, education, environment, food security, road networks at this preliminary stage of developmental phase in Rowing State priority and budgeting matters. Thank you for taking your time to listening to my reaction to our Rowan State Mega Million projects, we should be all concerned. Please comment below. Bye now. From your brother, Sirik Lang Mijak.